God talks to everyday people every day. Are you an everyday person? Do you go about your days doing what needs to be done? Working, playing, eating, sleeping, and doing the same the next day? Everyday people are people you pass on the street, see in the grocery store, sit beside a church, and meet for lunch. They can be any age or color, it matters not. God wants a personal relationship with each of us. When Jesus walked the earth, he lived with and communicated with everyday people. From fishermen and prostitutes to kings and social outcasts, he loved all people. He wanted everyone to know how great his Father's love was for them, and he went to extremes to show that love. Today, 2,000 years later, his goal remains the same. The religious leaders of Jesus' day wanted to know why he associated with common sinners. He told them in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, The Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. He also told them in Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 and 13, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. None of us are sinless, but God remains faithful to his children who ask for forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 says it this way, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. It is easy to believe that no one sin is worse than another, but the Bible tells us that all sin separates us from God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even so, God still talks to his people, his creation, because he loves us. It's been that way since the beginning, and it is still that way today. The Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I, the Lord, do not change. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Because God has created each of us uniquely, he uses different ways to talk to us. If we were to examine every instance in the Bible when the Lord communicates with someone, we would find that they could all be listed under one of the following categories. Each of these seven categories will be discussed within the book. God talks to us through the process of prayer, the Bible or other written words, the spoken word of clergy or others, an inner whisper or audible voice, the Holy Spirit, design and circumstances, sometimes called fate or coincidence, dreams and visions, angels. Because God can and does talk to people in all of these ways, we know that he is listening to us. The question is, are you listening to him? Throughout history, there have been countless examples of God reaching out to people. No matter your social or economic status, your religion, your race, or your circumstances, God loves you, and he wants you to know that his son Jesus died for you so that you can live forever with him in heaven. That is the simple truth. But very often, people have a lot of questions. What should we believe? Who should we believe? What religion or denomination is the right one? Is there really a God? If there is a God, why did he let this or that happen? I don't have all the answers. But the more I read the Bible, the more answers are revealed to me. All we really need to know is that God loves us. The remaining questions will be answered during our eternal life with him. As Paul said, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, and then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Book 1, Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 9 to 12. Even though by nature I'm a doubter, I have no other choice but to believe in God. After all, he has talked to me through all of the seven ways on the list. Please look at that list again. Pretty incredible, isn't it? Many people think that this is too far-fetched or even that it's impossible to believe. The doubting part of my nature would like to agree, but I can't. The Lord has communicated and continues to communicate with me, an everyday person, so frequently that I can't deny him. Let me say right now, I have not done anything to deserve God's attention. On the contrary, 
I have made some horrible mistakes and many bad decisions, maybe like you. Although I am not worthy of God's love, He loves me anyway. I'm grateful that He doesn't use good enough or holy enough standards toward us. Our only requirement for salvation is to believe in Him and to believe that Jesus died for our sins. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. God talks to you even if you don't have faith in Him or His Son Jesus. Stop right now and think about the times in your life when you received what you needed at just the right time. Keep thinking. There are more. Maybe it was a phone call, an opportunity, or maybe it was a friend or a spouse. Maybe you received help when you thought no one cared. Did you chalk it up to coincidence or fate? Could it be that God was helping you, reaching out to you, loving you? What about the times you made a really bad decision or big mistake? Did someone or something try to warn you? Think about it. Did God try to talk to you through a person, a sign, or a nagging thought? God wants the best for us, but we have to be willing to listen and to obey Him. Sometimes it is hard to listen. There are so many distractions, so many things pulling us in different directions. Our Choice Picture again in your mind the cartoon with an angel on one shoulder and a demon on the other. The character in the middle isn't important because he could be any of us. The Bible tells us that this is an accurate picture of life. We are told that both angels and demons exist. Angels do God's work and demons do the devil's work. See Matthew chapter 13 verses 38 to 40. If you are like me, it's hard to believe in things you can't see. Not impossible, but hard. In the same way that God uses different methods to talk to us, the devil uses different tactics too. Oddly enough, they both use a lot of the same methods to communicate with us. The big difference is that God loves us and always tells us the truth, while the devil hates us and lies to us. But don't be discouraged. God tells us that he will triumph over evil. See Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Before you read further, please stop and pray to God. Pray that he would give you a believing heart, a wise heart. Pray that God would give you an open mind to hear his voice and his truths, the discernment to realize which thoughts are from him. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Be glad, because God also tells us in Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 9 and 10, I have chosen you, and have not rejected you, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Maybe you've already been praying to God, or maybe not. Maybe you've been asking God for a miracle, a sign, or an answer. Maybe you are not sure if there is a God, or if he is listening to you. Maybe you're still weighing the odds, still waiting, still watching to see what will happen in your life before you make a decision about believing in God. I want to tell you about someone I know. Bob, but not his real name, and I used to work together. Bob was having some troubles in his life. The exact troubles don't really matter. They could be the same kind of troubles that you and I have, everyday problems. He had consulted with doctors and talked with counselors, but the problems remained. Talking hadn't helped, and neither did the medicine. These problems started to affect his work, and because I was his supervisor, I called him into my office, and he told me what was wrong. I truly felt sorry for this man, and I knew that God was the only one who could help him. I asked if he believed in God, and he said he did, but that he hadn't been to church since he was young. I asked if he had tried praying, and he said he hadn't thought about it. We decided to pray right then and there. After a few hours, I went to visit him in his work area to ask how it was going. No change, he said sadly. I expected him to say better, or at least a little better. I was puzzled and frustrated. What went wrong? I have to admit that God has spoiled me in my prayer life. I think it's because of my stubbornness. He has had to go the extra mile to reach me. I immediately went to an area where I could be alone to pray. I prayed for this man and asked God to answer. He did. Instantly, he brought the story of the Samaritan woman at the well to my mind. 
I didn't know what the relevance was, but I knew I had to tell Bob. The story is found in John, chapter 4, verse 1 to 42. Here is my paraphrase. One day, Jesus and his disciples were traveling through Samaria and stopped at a well near a town. Jesus stayed at the well while the disciples went to town for food. A local woman came to get water from the well, and Jesus asked her for a drink. She was surprised that he spoke to her because Jews didn't associate with Samaritans. Jesus told her that if she knew who was asking for a drink, she would have asked him for living water. He told her that anyone who drank this water would never thirst again. She asked him to give her some of this water so that she would not have to come up to the well anymore. Jesus told her to go get her husband and come back, but she said she had no husband. Jesus told her that she was right in saying that she had no husband because she had been married five times and the man she was with now was not her husband. Because he knew her past, the woman thought he was a prophet and asked him where the correct place to worship was. He told her that the important thing was to worship God in spirit and in truth. She told him that the Messiah was coming someday and that he could answer her questions. Jesus told her that he was the Messiah. She believed what he said and went back to town to get the others to talk to him. The Bible says that many people became believers over the next two days while listening to Jesus. While telling Bob this story, I realized what God was trying to tell him and us. Before God can truly help us, we need to admit our sin and humble ourselves before him. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I suggested to Bob that he go to a place where he could be alone, confess his sins to God, known and unknown. Ask God for forgiveness and ask God for his help. I'm happy to tell you that a short time later, Bob was back in my office telling me that he had prayed again and that this time he felt like a very heavy weight had been lifted from him. I gave him a daily devotional to take home and he even went to church that Sunday. On Monday at work, he told me that, coincidentally, the sermon had been about the Samaritan woman at the well. If you can relate with Bob's situation, if you've been to the end of your rope and think that God may not be listening to you, or that he doesn't care, or maybe doesn't even exist, I pray that you follow the four steps from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 to 22, that lead to forgiveness and fellowship with him. Humble yourself before God and admit your sin. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34 says, He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. Pray to God, asking for forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Earnestly seek God. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Turn from sinful behavior by yielding your life to Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16 says, Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. I would love to tell you that if you follow these four steps, everything will turn out for you just as you wish every time, but I can't. Sometimes God's will is not our will, and sometimes His timetable is not ours. At those times, all we can do is trust Him and believe His promises. His plan is always better because He is all-loving, all-knowing, and sovereign. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Keeping Track After each of the following chapters in this book, you will find an area where you can write the times and ways that God has talked to you. This book came into being because of a similar journal or list that I started more than 10 years ago. I was debating with some friends the question of whether there was a God or not and I couldn't remember all of the things that God had done in my life. So the next day, I wrote down everything I could remember and kept the list in my wallet. Over time, I added to it as more things happened. Documenting the God incidents in my life has been an invaluable tool in my walk with the Lord for two reasons. It strengthens my faith when I look at the list of things He has done already, and it helps me when I tell other people why I believe. I have seen God use this simple list to help bring people into a saving faith in Him 
and to help current Christians deepen their faith and grow closer to Him. The things on my list that God has done for me are the same kind of things that He is willing to do for anyone who wants to have a real relationship with Him. Our Lord truly desires to have a relationship with each of us, an intimate, best friend kind of relationship. When this kind of relationship is a reality in our lives, we begin to know and experience our Lord in deeper and more fulfilling ways than ever before. My prayer for you is that you would use this book as a tool to help you realize how much God loves you and to help you see what He has done in your life, how He is reaching out to you, how He is talking to you, and how He is building a relationship with you. May God's name be glorified every time you realize that God has been talking to you even before you are listening or seeking Him. As God tells us in Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 24, Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear.